Hey everyone, welcome to the new episode of For the Love of Reading. This is the podcast where we shine a spotlight on people who are doing amazing things to help children learn to love to read. I'm Christine French Color, your podcast host, and I think you're going to really like today's episode because we have a very special guest. I have as my guest the amazing Emily Arrow. Emily is an award winning children's songwriter and performer. A music educator, uh, 10 years of working with children in music, more than 10 years, I believe. She's a published picture book author, a YouTube personality, and of course, a book lover. Emily is all about fostering book love in kids. So Emily, welcome and thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you. It's an honor to be on Highlights podcast. This is making it for me because... Highlights was my favorite as a kid. It still is my favorite. Who are we kidding? But this is really exciting. A a great day for me. Oh, Emily, thank you. That's nice. For our listeners who are meeting you for the first time, um, talk about what you do. I mean, I, you know, I've always felt fortunate in my life that I've been able to take two of the things that I love the most, children and reading, and put them together and have this wonderful career that I've loved every second of. But I think you've got me beat. You've been able to take three things that I love, children, <laughs> reading, and music, and put them together to create something really kind of altogether new. I feel so lucky. That's exactly the way I would explain it too. I get to do all of my favorite things all the time. Um, I was recently asked sort of what's the difference between writing for kids and adults. And I just love writing for children. It's like permission to be fully me and sing about breakfast if I want or sing about dogs if I want or sing about books, which is usually what I want to sing about. And I've found it to be so inspiring because there's so much to do and create when you're working with kids. That's sort of the imagination of the idea of being young and creating stories in your head. It just, it's a great match for me to be able to write and make music in that space. So... You have created essentially a new genre of music. I think you call it kidlit tunes. Can you talk about so, that a little bit? Yeah, I was an elementary music teacher when I was reading and celebrating The Dot, the book by Peter H. Reynolds. And we were all celebrating my whole school, kindergarten to sixth grade. And the librarian just by happenstance said, I don't have time to read it to all the kids. How do you feel about doing the reading at the end of your music classes in case I don't get to see everyone? So I started reading the dot in my music classes and thought there's got to be a song about this or just something that I could use with it and kind of did a quick search online and didn't find much. So I I do remember going home. It was like the middle of the week and I had a few lessons left and I thought, I'll just try and write a song about it. And I wrote the dot song and brought it back to my students and they wanted to add motions. So we added some motions and then I shared that with Peter Reynolds and he said, this is so cool. Let's share it together. And my students really wanted a motions guide to practice at home. So I thought, well, how about I make a motions guide? I'll put it on my YouTube channel. Peter created a video, a lyric video. He shared that on his channel and we shared that for International Dot Day. And that was the first song I wrote about a book. And I thought, you know, this could be a really cool process. I studied music business in college as well and knew that I needed permission from the authors and this was their work. And this is a whole different thing than saying, I wrote a children's song. This is specifically a new genre. And so I started creating more songs about books, talking with the authors and sort of navigating the journey of how to turn a book into a song that's engaging for kids, that can have movements, that teachers might enjoy reading, that kids at home will enjoy singing. And that's what led me to my genre of kidlit tunes. That's amazing. 
So how many songs have you written to date based on children's books? Over 50 at this point. I I can't stop. It's like if I go to a bookstore and I see a picture book, I just record a little snippet in my phone because they are so inspiring to me. And I have a shelf, a whole shelf of the picture books I've written songs about. And it's just like growing and growing. It's really fun. Please don't stop first. (laughs) How do you choose which books you write a song about? I know it's cheesy, but I think they choose me. It's more of that doesn't sound cheesy to me at all. (laughs) Okay. Absolutely. I think anybody who loves books understands that. Some just speak to you, call out your name, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. And it seems sometimes a certain word or idea will be kind of buzzing in my mind during a phase of a week or a month. And sometimes a book will just really click with that. And I'll think this is really where I'm at as a person. And this story either is helping me through it or would help six-year-old me through it. And that's usually what kind of gets the inspiration going. So tell me how kids receive this gift. How and when do you share your music about books with kids? In lots of different ways, I do a bit of live performing, and I also record albums that I put a lot of time and intention into. When I record an album, I'm working with a collaboration of producers, maybe co-writers on songs, instrumentalists, and then those songs get shared on radio and all of the places where you can hear music. And I also create on YouTube, which that process is fun because I can have the idea, share the idea in a short span of time. And that kind of keeps me inspired in between the longer projects and also by writing, writing picture books, writing um, short stories or poems that helps me connect to. And sometimes in my live performances, I'll share a poem or something that I'm writing to, I think really bringing in the fact that I love books because I love stories and I love words is something that makes it extra fun to be able to connect with kids on. And I have an interesting experience as a performer. I think a lot of times as a children's musician, There's a lot of jumping or moving or shaking or wiggling associated with kids' concerts. And always by the end, we're much calmer than we started. That's at least my intention in just finding a space where they love love the experience of music and stories. I love going to concerts where even if I had a rough day, I feel a lot better after and maybe have found out something about myself along the way. So I'm trying to bring the same approach to interacting with kids as some of my favorite musical experiences. Well, I love that you're on YouTube, and I'm sure that that's a place where lots of children discover your music. It's nice to think about that being on YouTube when there are so many other ways kids could spend their time. This seems like an especially good good thing to do on YouTube. (laughs) Well, thank you. I do think it's there's a big um, in both ways, a big push towards devices and then a big push away from devices. And I really want to help devices be a safe space where music can be seen and heard. But also what I'm singing about a lot of times is a book and you have to go away from a device to experience that book. So sort of sharing that YouTube can be a place to grow and interact with technology as a resource. I love that. So do you have evidence that kids do go away and experience the book after they hear you sing about it? Yes, lots. I love when I go to, sometimes I perform at schools and the parents will say, my child came home from school and said, we have to go to the library. We have to get this book because we watched this video And librarians will tell me that there's a whole shelf full of these books, but they can't keep them on the shelves. And that's exactly, I mean, there's no more hope you could have than to get a kid who might not normally be excited about a book or reading in general to access it through music. 
Yeah, that's that's beautiful. Do you have any specific stories or anecdotes you'd like to share about about that? Yeah, there's a school, a librarian named Emily Gardner at a school in Texas in Round Rock. And I've visited their school a couple of times now. It's so fun to to go back and visit. And she has created a shelf in her library with little arrows on the books to indicate that there's a song written about the book. And she told me that there was a particular kid who had gone through all of the books and had checked, marked them all off on a list and had a couple left and came in and said, this Emily Arrow book is missing. I need to have this Emily Arrow book. And she said, for the last time, it's not Emily Arrow's book. (laughs) She wrote a song about this book. And just the idea that this is something that they're collecting and thinking about and finding so much joy in by going to the library and interacting with with what's there it just really it keep that keeps me inspired to to make more yeah that's wonderful all the research shows that um, kids who read a lot for fun who choose to read tend to be more empathetic and I think I read somewhere in some of your writings that you are you have a special interest in the social emotional develop of ch- development of children, that you have a special interest in the social emotional development of children. How does that influence some of the book choices you make or or just your work in general? Mm-hmm. That is really the heart of what I'm sharing. And I spend a lot of time personally reading on these topics through poetry really moves me toward some of those um, ideas like Mary Oliver and I love reading Ursula K. Le Guin and sort of finding theories about how to cultivate a life of empathy and connection and I've found that reading really brings that into my life So a piece of what I try to bring is, of course, sharing stories and literacy with kids. But what I think the magic of it is, is growing those those capabilities for um, warm connections and living a kind life. So some some of the projects that I've done, specifically my album projects, I do have a theme of usually a social emotional topic and often it's self-expression or finding an inner an inner guide or voice. And my song, Follow Your Arrow, that ended my first album of songs about books, that's an original song that's really about listening to that inner voice and finding a sense of intuition through life. And I think that's been, it's really been a way to extra connect with kids because they're learning these things in a way, but they're experiencing all of the feelings that we're experiencing and giving some vocabulary to that, I think is really liberating and healing. And it's something we can do simply songs really teach a lot of emotion and expression. And the combo of songs and books. Wow. (laughs) Hard to beat. So were you an avid reader as a child? Very much so. They're just every photo of me is like not really me because I have books in front of my face. Um, I I remember just I really loved bedtime in quotes because I would just that's when I started reading and then I would stay up way too late and my parents would say, you better not be still reading in there. And I just loved I loved reading Fiction was not always my favorite, which is interesting. I was a nonfiction kid. I'm still a nonfiction reader. And that's been a cool thing to see and remember about myself that even then I really loved reading biographies and stories of real people or emotional stories and content that um, like highlights, things that can share some information that really gave me ideas. I think I'm always looking for ideas and that's what books had to offer and still do. Yeah, that's great. I would imagine that after hearing you sing about their favorite books, 
that sometimes kids try their own hand at writing a song about their favorite book. Is that something you encourage or have, have kids come back to you and shared with you some of their own creative work along these lines? That's the biggest joy. It's like, um, I'm trying to think of that quote about being copied is the greatest form of flattery. And for a kid to think, hmm, she's doing it. I'm going to do it and write my own song is so such a neat way of bringing it back around. And I just created a book, The Kid's Guide to Learning the Ukulele. And in that book, after they've tried some of the chords, I have a section that is called the song recipe. And they can sort of piece in some of the chords and then try their own lyrics. And I think that's a huge part of the self-expression, social emotional component, being able to translate ideas into words on a page is so powerful. Absolutely. What other instruments do you play? I started on the piano. I have moved so much in my adult life that I don't even have one right now. And sometimes I just want to call up someone and say, do you even have a piano? Can I please come over? Because I miss it. It's, it's such a great instrument, not so portable. And then I learned guitar and I didn't connect with it as much as the ukulele, which I learned from a friend who taught me four chords. And that's what I teach in this book too. So I really do love um, the, I, the process of learning new instruments. So I have a longer list of, I really want to learn these instruments to go. Cello's at the top. Oh, I love cello. That's my, one of my favorites. But I know that you love your ukulele and you've given it a name. It's named Bo, and this particular ukulele is a tenor, so it's a little bit larger, and it's just, it's my soul match. I have written all of my songs on the ukulele for kids, and I also, because of the instrument's size and sound, it lends to me creating melodies that can be catchy and connect with kids in a way that no instrument ever connected that way with me. Well, for our listeners who might not have um, caught the joke, that's Bo spelled (laughs) B-O-W. Exactly, like bow and arrow. It's almost a visual joke. You have to see it if you're not (laughs) too tuned in. Um, We're dying to hear you sing one of your songs. Would you do that for us? Yes, and... I already prepared one that I'm currently working on that I wanted to share with you today. And I think it's perfect for what we just discussed. This is a song called Write Your Song. Perfect. I hope you don't stop talking to trees. Mm -mm -mm, I know they're listening. I hope you don't stop dreaming your dreams. I hope you still use your voice, even if it's the hardest choice. Hey, hey, we've all got it inside us. Hey, a verse and a chorus. Hey, hey, come on and write your song, song, song. Song, 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 just write your song. lovely really Thank wonderful you. if our listeners want to learn more about you emily where should they go they can find me on my website at emilyarrow.com where i have lots of videos and tutorials songs they can download and then also wherever they listen to music like spotify or itunes and of course on my youtube channel thank you 
Let me just take a moment here to say that uh, Emily's YouTube channel is uh, youtube.com backslash Emily Arrow. And Emily, you do some really wonderful things for kids there, especially right now during this time of sequestering. So um, listeners, you'll definitely want to check that out. And um, they should go to the library and find the Arrow books and read to their children. <laughs> yes, that first, right away. <laughs> Thank you for your time. It's been lovely. Thank you. For show notes and information about other episodes in our podcast series, visit us at loveofreading.highlights.com. My name is Kinley. I'm nine years old and I'm in third grade and I just love to read.